Good afternoon and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night and we are live. Oh! Hello to everybody. Hello to Sam, Steve and Blue. We've got a full Hi. house today. Hey. And uh, hello to the audience. Anybody here listening? Anyone who's listening or anyone watching on YouTube. Um, Resonance Arcade is a show about games. We just talk about games for a couple of hours every Wednesday night at 7.30. Um, four, four blokes from the north north of England just wittering on about crap basically the north north we're all from Shetland from the north north yeah we're all from the Orkney the Shetland Isles <laughs> and up there with all the rare birds that there are if you've been watching Spring Watch anyone watch Spring Watch no oh, Spring Watch is awesome better than Autumn Watch it's summer well, over, was, there was a spring, if you didn't know, that there, there just happened oh. to be just a few, you know, weeks ago we were in spring, yeah. Well, I must have missed that. <laughs> anyway, Spring Watch is brilliant. It's, uh, what's his name? Chris Peck, Peckham? Peckham? I thought it was Bill Oddie. Is he not on it anymore? No, he, he got sacked years ago for doing some he shouldn't have done, I think. And uh, it's him and uh, Michaela Strachan. He got sacked for something he shouldn't have done on Spring Watch. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't <laughs> even know. I can't remember. He probably had an argument with somebody, yeah. Fondle the badger or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 actually quite funny to watch if you're into wildlife in any way, shape, or form. It's uh, it's actually quite cool. I'd recommend it. But anyway, this isn't a show about <laughs> about wildlife. It's a show about uh, games. So what we normally do is we talk about the games that we've been playing this week to start off with. Um, again, all of I've actually played a few more games this week, but only a few, kind of you know, a little bit more. But um, I've mainly been playing Arkham Knight this week. <laughs> And I can actually play it, according, uh, unlike a lot of other PC users. And um, I played a little bit of Witcher, but not not loads of it. I'm on seventy hours so far. So um, you got your game, you got your money's worth out of it, at least. I've got my money's worth. I'm going to play more of it. Don't get me wrong. I just wanted to play a bit of Arkham Knight because I was enjoying it. But do you know what's hot about the Witcher? Just to talk about it briefly. I can't. There's no information that I could find that tells me how many hours I've put into the game. Mine's all guesswork. My save file doesn't say it. There's nothing. There's nothing in the stats that says, as far as I'm aware, how many hours so far. Oh, righty, it's, it's not on Steam or GOG, are you? That's yeah, why, just did it on the. That's a why lot of PC games have it in is the best. Yeah, but a lot of games have it in your main menu, like your stats menu, of how many hours you've played. Like a pretty standard don't thing. Don't start depressing people. Anyway, I've put in quite a lot, but I don't know how many. Yeah, that's it. That's nothing more to say about the Witcher. Six, Sixty-nine hours, forty-five minutes. I'm level twenty-three now, I think, or something like that. Uh, I have literally cleared everything apart from the new DLC that's com that's come out um, from Velen and Novigrad. I am a Gwent Poker Master, but Gwent Poker, a Gwent Card Master. I've beaten the um, the main. There's a there's a really big main quest of it at the end, and I still haven't found the fourth card set. So I don't know where that comes well, uh, from. If we're bragging, I've played Shadow under fifty hours. I'm level twenty one. Um, and I've just to say got the Skelliger, uh, yeah. the, uh, the Skelliger Isles now, so I've still got all that stuff to do. I'm about, I'd say, two or three main storyline kind of mini quests into the into the Skelliger bit, but I've put it off to go back to Velen and Novigrad to finish off some of the the higher level ones that I couldn't do when I was there. Um, mm. But I've done a fair few Skelligan side quests, but not. I mean, there's so much of it. There's question marks everywhere. And I must complete them all. Yeah. Must get all. I've also got all my. Um, I've got full. I've got all of the armor sets and all of the upgrades apart from the wolf armor because the wolf. Uh, that's the new. That's some DLC. Uh, the wolf armor. You have to go back to Care Mor Mor Care Mor Care Mohan Mohan. Um, but yeah, I think you go back there later in the quest in the main quest. So I can't get back there so. right now. But you must do. You have to because. One, I've read it on the internet, and two... <laughs> they wouldn't have put it in the intro of the game if you weren't going to go back there. Well, it's not just that. You, you get the wolf armour upgrades in the main side of the quest, but the, the main wolf armour, that you, you can't do any of the upgrades until you go back to get the main armour from, from mm. that area. So, Plus, it's a whole. if you actually go on the map, if you zoom out and go to the right-hand side of the map, it's there on the map and you can zoom into it, but there's no markers, so you can't travel back yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I'm st I'm still enjoying The Witcher. I'm still thoroughly getting into it. Yeah, the, I was. We're, we're going to get onto Arkham Knight in a little bit. But the reason that I hadn't went out and bought it straight away was because oh, I kind of I, sometimes I don't like to split my attention between two games, and I haven't had that much time to be playing The Witcher at the moment. And I was like, I know once I get into the Arkham Knight, I'm going to end up being torn 
between two games that I really want to play. But I went and bought it today anyway. <laughs> I am I am in that boat right now. However, I'm probably going to put Arkham Knight down for a bit because of all the bugs that PC users are getting at the moment. I don't know if you've heard about that, Sam. I know that it's been... Yeah, for some reason it's been very, very badly ported to PC. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit more. We've got quite a few news stories uh, around it. Have, uh, have you two played The Witcher this week? I haven't. Very briefly, probably about half an hour. An right. hour so I have, I've only played a few hours this week because I've just been uh, other things. I did the um, Arkham Knight. I did the I did the high stakes Gwent tournament. That was pretty cool. Did you uh, Did you beat it? Uh, well, I I did, but I kind of I didn't. I wouldn't say I cheated, but I definitely used the checkpoint because I lost a game against somebody and was like, oh! and it makes you fail the quest if you do, and you can't. So I was like, right, I'll go back and win that game, and then I won. Then save I scummer. Quest. I I yeah. assumed it would do that, but I actually I'm not save scumming in this game. For I mean. If I die... Bollocks! No, I'm not. I'm, I'm really not. You, you save scum as just like a reflex. Fuck you won't even realise you're doing this. <laughs> I am. Don't get me wrong. I'm at five in every five seconds. But... <laughs> That's Chris, the same thing. Chris tries, to F, Chris tries to F5 if he just like makes a wrong turn in the car. I F5 <laughs> in Word, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm a game. I F5 in Visual Studio, just for... <laughs> just in case. Um... No, I, I no, I haven't save scummed. I haven't restarted a quest. With that. That's what I would consider save scumming in a game like this. I haven't restarted a quest before. I mean, I've, don't get me wrong. I've died a few times, but I'm not dying that much. There's, um, I, I don't know if you've found it yet uh, or not. There's, uh, have you been on Skellige, Sam? I just got there and, and right. sort of talked to Yennefer at the first little bit, and then just started to wander around that first little town. That's it. There's a, there's a, there's like a there's a level thirty one ghost in some cavern somewhere. You'll probably run into it at some point, but it's you get some pretty good potions after you kill him. But after you get through, the, the, it's only a tiny little area. But it's like it's crazy hard. And I first went to fight him at level twenty one, two hits, and I was just nailed. So, you know that kind of thing. If I run into someone by accident and get nailed, then I, I'll just load back at the last save, but... I found some grave hag or something with a question mark next to it, and it hit me once and killed me instantly. Was it Was it on the bottom left-hand side of the map? The it was south? like on a, on a peninsula on, yeah, um, yeah. in um, Berlin. You know, when we were talking you know, ages ago, when we first started playing it, and I said the bottom of the map, that's where all the high-level ones are. That's one yeah. of them I was talking about, but... Yeah, I've, I've killed her now. She's she's been done. Southwest, the, the, it was in the Velen equivalent of Cornwall. Yeah, Southwest, yeah. Yeah, I, I've still got quite a few question marks there that I've not been back to yet, because they were kicking my head in so I was like I'll come back here later when I'm a bit harder yeah so are you still playing it Lou? uh yeah I've just not played it for the last week I played um, I tell a lie I played a bit of Gwent I'm, I'm uh, messing around with some Gwent in I'm still in Novigrad walking around I'm trying to get all the unique cards off everyone in, in Novigrad uh so you've, you've got into Gwent and you've got a handle on it now I, I can, I've worked out how to play it yeah I've opened yeah. up all of the um ne nearly every single one of the leader cards as well now I think I still have one of the monster leader cards to open, but I've I got um, all four of the others. I still haven't got uh, uh, enough monster units to actually play with that deck yet. I really, really want to start using it. I've just to say got enough now to uh, to start playing with the monster deck. I've got uh, quite a lot of extra on all of them now. I've uh, I've actually started. I'm I'm trying to keep my deck my unit cards to twenty two in every pack in every yeah, stack, but I'm replacing them all with special cards and good cards. You know, like hero cards rather um but yeah i'm yeah. Getting, getting quite good with that um oh, the one thing as well i don't know if i put it in the document or we talked about it last week i'm sure it was i'm sure i didn't talk about it um the xbox 360 has a gwent special. yeah i remember us talking about that right that was been last week then sorry sorry i just can't remember us talking about yes yeah, it's, it's got a, a special that the xbox 360 collector's edition has two Gwent not decks in it is it not the Xbox One Special Edition? That's what really? I meant, sorry. I'm still that in 2003. <laughs> so it's actually got a physical Gwent set. Mm. Yeah. But That's if you think about Gwent, you're probably going to need a board as well and and extra counters to kind of keep track of some of the things because some of them are doubled up occasionally. Yeah. Depending on to be what. honest, if, if I was playing Gwent in, in real life, I would need to calculate it because my mental arithmetic is not as fast as the computers. I'd just be like, right, think... so I've done that and I've multiplied all these guys on this row. But then he's put a biting frost on it, so 
You know what I mean? Like you've got to. I'd hate that. This, this is why games like that need to be computerized. You can, well, you can make yeah, it like a mobile version <laughs> that you can play locally on. You yeah, like a said, iPad or something. That'd you only cool. said like a that few weeks cool. ago that you hated card games on the internet on, on computers. <laughs> I do. I hate. I hate card games that overtly make themselves everything. out to be card games. But it, it, it just it's stuff like, to be fun. Just you just no, say stuff to, to be controversial for fun. <laughs> it just, just you don't have any opinions. I would <laughs> rather Gwent didn't, didn't. I was. I'd rather Gwent didn't have cards in it. I'd rather it dispensed right. with the idea of having cards with it and just had the monsters or the units. Okay, that's consistent. I'll give you that. All right, you did say that. Um, I disagree though. I think the, the cards just make give it, it give it that kind of tactical advantage. If you know what I mean. Otherwise, you're literally just moving what models, real things around models real of monsters, monsters onto. Yeah, which is what you do in a strategy game. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it, it makes sense within the world of The Witcher that you would go to a, a bar, basically, that have a Gwent board, cards, yeah. and you've got your own deck, and you yeah. meet, like, Jimmy Mc whatever. Like, going to a Jimmy pub. Jimmy McQuint. Like, it's, like, it's, like it's like you might wander into a pub, if you might, you might, not that you carry your own pool cue with you, but you might go and have a game of pool with some bloke in a pub, with your own cue, and be like, right, let's do this, and... Yeah, yeah the, con the context... Principle. The context in which it's used in the game is consistent, and then it, it makes sense that it's a game within a game. Gwen McGwen, yeah. the Gwent Master. Right. <laughs> so, are we, uh, anything else about The Witcher this week? Because we might as well just get that out of the way and done dusted. Oh, it's still good. Yeah, it is still brilliant, I, and I'm not bored at all. I'm, I've, I've, I've absolutely destroyed Velen now. I'm sure there'll be more quests to open up there. Like, I think uh, let's talk about the news actually for The Witcher while we're on The Witcher before we might as well kind of. Fast forward into the rest of the show. Um, so we've got the... Uh, there's a few new DLCs out since we last talked about it. There's... Uh... Go on. There's one new DLC. Just, just one. No, there's, isn't there two? There's two new quests. The first no, one is a Skelliger quest. Sure, From what that article said, it was just the one. The, okay, in that article there is, but there's actually another, another one previous to that, which is the... I think it's 10 or 11. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Uh, I, th I thought I it was the armor upgrades last time. Yeah, anyway, well then. And another quest. There's, there's a Skellig quest that I haven't done yet, anyway. Um, a DLC quest, but there's also this brand new DLC quest. And I think this is it. I think they're done with the, the free DLC. I think if you want any more now, it's going to be the paid for uh, October releases, which are going to be significant, aren't they? They're going to be big. Yeah, big one of them is a whole new area. I might get that. To be honest, because <laughs> well, by the time October I, runs yeah. around, I'll probably completed the main quest, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I get some more Witcher on it. Why not?" I, I might, I, I might I, be I, dying from Metal Gear Solid Five overdose at that point, but I might still be wanting to get it when it I, comes I out. Think, I think I might because not not because I'm um, you know I've, I'm I'm generally opposed to DLC in general, but because CD Projekt Red are doing it right. And and they, res they seem to respect their community quite well, and they're, they're doing a good job of releasing patches, doing a good job of releasing free DLC, and it's mostly quite decent DLC as well. It's not just, I mean, some of the quests I've done, like that pig quest, um, you got you find a village in Velen somewhere, and everyone's a pig or something, and you have to figure out why. It's 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 fairly substantial. It's not tiny, you know, um, but I like that, and and I think I'll support them as a as a development studio, you know. Not that they need it. I mean, they've got fucking billions by now, probably with that sale. But they've certainly done well out of this one. Yeah. Oh, well, um, good for them. It feels like they've probably earned, like they've put the time in and earned it. So you know, fine. It's good to see somebody who's got good practices actually being successful. That was it. Skelliger's most wanted was the last one, which was a quest, and yes. this one's uh, you get it in Oriton Village, and it's uh, where the cat and the wolf play. So don't know what it's about, but there's a link in chat for people. I'm going to guess that you'd be a witcher from the cat school and do a quest with them. Probably, yeah. I also, oh, I just re re remember there's actually one unique Gwent card that I've still got left to do. You have to, um, you have to, it's, an, it's on the old pals quest and you have to get it off Lambert. I don't know if you've met Lambert in the main quest. It, sa or not. it says, it says when you meet Lambert, try and play him at Gwent and then it, it, do, it says there's nowhere on the map that you can go and meet him, so my guess is that he's, it's going to be. He's in Mo he's in Moran, yeah. He's in Kaer yeah. Moran. Um, so basically, when you go back there, it's going to be. Uh, I don't know, there's going to be a fair bit to do there as well. I thought I was exhausted of the areas with the three that were in. But... Yeah. Okay, so anyone else played anything else that they want to talk about this week? Nope. No? Uh, no? I played uh, three 
call it a DLC or is it uh, like an add-on um, to the Portal series? Uh, it's called Portal Stories. Okay. This is the person's first installation we call Mel. We see a bit of a play on shell. I've only really played about half an hour of it. I was just testing it out because it only got released on Tuesday. Is that an add-on to Portal 2 then? Portal 2, yeah. And it's really? basically... It takes place kind of before the main shell story, obviously. Um, but after the prime of Aperture Science. So you're going in there and you're still getting all of the the automated their messages getting played by Cave Johnson. But the place is a little bit run down, you're the only one there. You meet another AI um, personality who guides you around and I expect you start doing tests and all that type of stuff. But like I say, I've, I've, only, I've only played about 30 minutes so far. Has it been, is it new Cave Johnson lines or are they just recycling the old ones? No, no, it's a community made. Um, ah, so right. right. So it's, it's, it's not the proper voice actors. It kind of right. sounds similar, but it's noticeable that it isn't actually him. Sorry, I thought this was an actual bit of DLC. But yeah, I was wondering why I hadn't heard it's of like, it. like, yeah, why haven't I heard about it? Right, gotcha now. It's the community made thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry to not say that when I started off. No. I don't think you did. I think you said it was DLC or an add-on. <laughs> yeah, you said. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> is it a DLC anyway. or add-on? But yeah. Okay. There so we... what is it actually? Is it is it in the 3D portal world? It's like a comic or anything like that. It's no, no. It's it is the engine. It's the same game, the same engine, the same assets. Right. But just made a new story with it. That's pretty cool. It's a standalone game, but you need to have Portal Two in order to get it because the game itself is free. And is it right. good so far from what you played? Um, it's it's not as polished as Portal 2. Um, obviously, you can tell the difference in the voice acting and everything, but with it being the same engine, the same assets, it has got a similar sort of feel. Uh, I haven't really given it enough time to be too critical of it, I think, so... But it's free, so if you've got Portal 2, you may as well download it and give it a try. I might do. Yeah. If I had that on PC, I'd get it, definitely. Why not? Who doesn't want more Portal 2? Exactly. Uh, but that's about it, really. I haven't really played a lot this week. Um, well, okay, so no one else has played anything, so let's play. talk about some Darkham Knight. Dark, Darkham Knight. Darkham Knight. Dark, Darkham Knight. <laughs> Again, That's we've like got the French thing, like, D apostrophe, the Arkham Knight. Yeah. So, you were going to uh, sum up your experience with Darkham Knight on a scale of 1 to 10, how shit is it? Uh, it's, I'd say, on a scale of 1 to 10, how shit it is, I would say it's about 2. That is how shit it is. How shit yeah. is the implementation on PC? For me, probably about 7. For most other people, by the sounds of it, it's a nine or a ten out of, out of ten. I am experiencing a bit of frame rate for slowdown occasionally. It's definitely playable. Um, I've got all of the settings on full at nineteen twenty, and it's it's playable. It, it lags a little bit when the the um, Batmobile shows up. Still, cutscenes are all right. Everything's really seamless. It's a nice. It's a lovely looking game for me. I mean, obviously the textures are quite low quality at the moment because that's what they've done. Um, they've hard coded it in, on our side, on the PC side. Um, I've unlocked the frame rate to sixty FPS instead of thirty FPS. Uh, but the game itself, I'm, I'm, a, it's a thumbs up from me. I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah, I've played about two hours of it, and I got there's a little bit of a fiddly thing with the Batmobile where I, the Batmobile is in the game, and they obviously promoted it quite a lot. And there's two modes: there's like a driving mode and a combat mode. And I was just fiddling around with like the, you can toggle it or you can have it as a hold the button down to do the combat. And I was faffing on with that, and that was a bit frustrating when the Batmobile was first introduced. But what was really nice, it was really really cool introduction to the game. Like you saw that screenshot of the woman in the diner. There's a little uh, introduction where you play as a copper, and, and the scarecrow releases his fear gas, and everyone starts going crazy. And then there's a really really cool long swoop up to Batman being mm. Batman on top of a high building. And then you just dive off and you're straight in and it's like, yeah, getting into this. Like, it really gets you into it very well. Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a good fan service, you know. It's like, it's it feels like, again, like you're Batman. The one criticism I do have relating to the previous games that Rocksteady did is that the combat feels a lot easier. And I've got it on the hard setting. I felt that as well. I put it on hard, jumped straight in, and I've been poning about twenty guys at once, like with no difficulty. But the the one thing you do have in this is that on the in the hard setting on the previous games, you couldn't have the um, mm. whatever it was the the, the spider sense. Yeah, That's yeah, what it looks like to me bat sense. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. But now you've got an option to turn that on or off. 
in hard setting. So I've got it on because, I mean, it does make the game easier to play in general and less frustrating, I think. But I don't think that's what it is. I think what they've done is they've improved the combat, but they've also made it... They've, they've made it so you don't have to be as accurate with the controls. If you just keep hammering a, bu a button and occasionally pressing counter, you'll pretty much beat any fight. You won't beat it very eloquently and you won't get the most amount of combo points and everything else you can get with it, but you can beat the fight. I'm also playing it on keyboard as well for the first time and previously I've been playing it on pad and uh, on I played it on 360 uh, the last couple of games. And the, the, the pad is a lot more... Um, there's a lot more high f uh, fidelity with it. You know, you can basically control... You can control all the different moves he does a lot easier on the pad. So I'm missing a lot of the moves because it's like press alt and then press one twice to do some of the takedown moves and um, press tab, to, uh, press shift twice or three times to to do a, a boost into the sky with your grappling hook and things like that. It's a bit clunky on the keyboard, but it has been designed for pad, you know? You could. Could you not play it with a pad on your PC? I could, but I don't like it. <laughs> now I've been playing it with the... the, the the keyboard controls. I actually prefer the keyboard controls, especially for things like the um, the Batmobile control. Um, okay. uh, I, as you said, the battle mode. It, I actually spent probably about the first two hours fucking around with the controls, getting them feeling just right, and making sure I'm not pressing the wrong buttons when I'm fighting. Because even though you can just hammer buttons, I also want to be able to do all the extra moves and use the, all the little gadgets that he's got when you're doing the free flow combat. So yeah, I'm 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 still loving it though. Don't get me wrong; it just feels a lot like it's more, it's just easier somehow. I I think it could be the fact that they're probably from what I've heard in the reviews and I've read read and seen a couple of reviews. There's a lot of enemy types in it, so I think you're starting you off at the start of the game with just plebs on the street, and you're going to get more difficult guys as you go along, and they're going to mix them up. I remember Arkham Origins, obviously, was not made by Rocksteady, but it was the third kind of the third game prequel whatever you want to call it and they would you would get to a point where you jump into a, a situation and there'd be like five different enemy types that you'd have to organize and contend with at the same time hmm. so at the moment I've, I've only encountered basically blokes and sometimes armed with a bat but i know there's going to be knife dudes gun dudes yep so to be fair, stun batons you know they big don't, poking they, dudes they don't introduce you into into any of the mechanics and gadgets gradually like they did in the previous games you, you don't have to really unlock much you upgrade things i don't know if you've looked at the upgrade system or i've not. looked at that yeah um and you, there's obviously upgrades for the batmobile upgrades for your bat suit um there's a there's a number of different um gadgets as well that kind of get delivered to you as you progress in the game so the way that is... they've done that is a bit different from the previous games yeah, the, you, yeah. In the first, in the first uh, Arkham Asylum, should we say, you you walk into that asylum when you've not, you take it, you drop the Joker off, and you've got nothing. You've got your detective vision, your normal Batman hardness, and batarangs. You've got no no other gadgets on you. You get the gadgets as you go, sort mm. of like uh, like upgrades. You get you find more cool weapons to use as you go along. And Arkham City, Arkham City did that as well. This one. You're sort of in the zone. You've got a few of your gadgets. You've got go. your, you've got your line launcher straight off. You've got yeah, all yeah. your gadgets pretty much. But the new gadgets they've introduced, such as there's like a new hacking thing on the the Batmobile, and there's a new um, there's a new bat suit and things like that. I'm not going to go into t too much detail. To, to don't want to spoil. I've, I played about ten hours of it, so I've played a fair a fair amount of the story as well as a lot of the side missions. But it unlocks a lot of side missions as you progress in the game, as you get closer. It also feels like the city is more alive it feels like i'm as i'm going around walking around or flying around or whatever there are things getting said and talked about but they're not just um, in the previous game it seemed to be that they, they'd talk to you and they'd just be like it's a bit of info that you've got occasionally or it's just background chatter but now as it says things I don't, you might have to correct me here sam if i'm wrong but as the as as people say things there's a little marker on your map telling you where it's getting said and if you go to that place if there's a riot going on, there's a riot going on in that place. If uh, mm. you hear chatter about uh, two, like some of jo not Joker, Scarecrow's guys are going to be talking about <clears throat> uh, talking about a dead body on a roof or whatever. If you go to that place, there's a dead body on the roof. You know that kind of thing. They did have that in Arkham City as right. well. I think it's just a bit more pronounced in this one. One thing I will say about it about it feeling easy as well is that you and I have like played through the first two games. 
And I know that you got into the challenges, mm, the combat yeah. challenges in them. So you and I are, for lack of a better term, quite veterans at this at this style of Batman game. It's so cool, when we jump yeah. in, when we jump into a melee fight, we know what we're doing, and we're gonna we are gonna smack these guys' heads in. Whereas I would say this is not a good game for newcomers in terms of you're not introduced to the stuff. I jumped in and was throwing batarangs in the back claw because I knew what the controls were. I was like, I'm into this already. Whereas a newcomer might be like, oh, what's going on? I'm getting punched a lot. Yeah. So I mean, I've died a few times as well. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's some some of the fight. There's one fight in particular that uh, I've just just done. It took me probably about 25 goes to do it because Jesus. it's a, basically a room. I'm on hard, as you said, and you you probably have the same kind of thing when you get to it. It's just a room chock a block chock a block full of all. There's also environment takedowns as well and stuff, and that's pretty cool. I think they add, add that in quite seamlessly. But there's a room just chock a block full of different types of enemies, and there's also medics in this game as well. So you'll get an enemy type that'll come in mm. and revive people instead of, you know, which is, again, another dynamic to add into it. And it's like, oh, God, I've got to fuck him up first, you know. Anyway, I can see yeah. Lou and Steve are completely bored of... I've of... not played any of the series, so I don't know what anything they, you're talking I, about. I really, really, as we said this before, I cannot recommend Arkham Asylum enough. It's a really, really superb Batman action game. It's ha really, really good. Have you got any love for Batman? No. All right. No. See, when I started playing any, it, I was going to. Have you got any? Have you got any love for a sort of explore an area, beat up some dudes, and use gadgets kind of game and do some stealth no. takedowns? Not a third no? person one, no. Oh, it doesn't that? interest me at all. This is why I haven't played any of them. I don't like Batman, and I don't like third person beat em ups. I actually have Arkham Origins. Origins is seventy five. Origins. Origins is the one that you, is not the good one, though. But you got it was made by a different graphics card. It was made by a different studio, and it, it's it's okay, but it doesn't have that like panache and the the, the feel that um, Arkham Does, Asylum had. Doesn't Batman feel a bit more wooden in this game to you as well than the previous ones? Like the animation on him, especially, he doesn't seem to have any expression at all. Um, I don't know. I've not. I've only been playing for two hours. I like, I went out shopping today bought it and I came back and I played it for a bit and then I came to do this. So I've, I've played for for just two hours so far and I've just started scratching the surface of it. And what I will say is that uh, like in the other games, the voice talent, again superb. They've got like, the voice actors from the animated series and they've got for people that know it, Kevin Conroy as Batman is just awesome always. And they've got uh, the guy who played uh, Mike in Breaking Bad is now doing Commissioner Gordon. I forget the actor's name but he's really good. Uh, loads of really, really good veterans. Anyone that knows their voice actors, like Gray Griffin's in it, you, uh, Tara Strong's in it. Do you do you know that one of the people from Arkham City is in it as well? Another one of the main guys in Arkham City. Um, as in a character. Or do, do you want me to tell you? Because I don't really want to spoil things, but there's a, there's a really, really cool mechanic that they've added into it. Um, Go on, I'm not that bothered. Okay, so uh, Joker's back in it. Mark Hamill is is back in it. Now, oh no, I've heard, I've heard about this, and one of the reviews did spoil this a little bit for oh, me right. about that people are getting sort of jokerized. Yeah, well, it's not just that uh, that he's he he is actually in it. The Joker's actually in it, but he's dead. So that's mm. the mechanic that's interesting, and it's re. I I think the way they've done it, and again, Mark Ham. Some of the things like the death scenes, you know, they always have a a, a, a character come on and like say bat. They actually yeah <laughs> they, yeah. There's, there's there's all kinds of parodies going on as well. It's funny. You, you laugh at some of them, but um. Yeah, the, the Joker's in there, and it's some of the things he comes out with are just hilarious. But there's also another, I said, a cool mechanic you'll run into, and we maybe can talk about it next week when you... Uh, what time? When you, I'm, when gonna, you I'm probably going to start hammering it now that I've got it. I'll be like, Batman, 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 Batman. I think if you play about four hours, um, maybe five hours, you'll see what I mean. There's a there's a cool bit in it yeah. to do with, uh, with the Joker. <laughs> Right, just you one can cool now... bit. <laughs> if you play for five hours, you might get to see a cool bit. No, no, it's cool anyway. From the off, like as Sam Wait, said, I, it's like I if you like Batman, you know, the, the instant. You, uh, to be fair, the instant that you learn that they give you the Batmobile instantly, like the second you get in the fucking game, and it's like it's the second thing you do, and it's like, oh my god, it's fucking brilliant, that and it's a really good cool. implementation of the Batmobile. <clears throat> so right. you can now you can now awaken from your comas. We've finished talking about Batman. <laughs> We, well, we have, but let's just well, quickly talk about the news. <laughs> let's just quickly talk about the Batman news. So, yeah, we've got um, Batman Arkham. Arkham Knight first week sales exceeded The Witcher 3's first week sales, which I am shocked about, I have to be honest. I'm not that shocked about it because The Witcher 2, as we talked about before, was a very, very well-reviewed game and did have pretty good sales, right? It wasn't 
a Super Smash hit, but it had pretty good sales. Yeah. Arkham Knight has is the third part of what is now being called the trilogy, which the people weren't sure if it was going to be, but of a, of two games that were really massively successful and multi-platform. The Witcher one and two weren't. So The Witcher three has come out multi-platform, and now it's this big thing. But it's not coming off the back of another su- gaming franchise that's really already massive. Which I is suppose what I'm Arkham shocked Knight because is. they've been giving it away, like with graphics cards, Arkham Knight, and because um, I, I don't think that includes giveaways, does it? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. um, and but anyway, but it, I'm, I'm shocked because it, I th- uh, the PC's having so many problems, and they've taken um, it off sale. The, the sales mm. do include giveaways, right? Okay, right, so okay. It's, it's not the, uh, the game studio that's giving it to the fans. It's Nvidia that buys a copy off them and then packages right. it with the product. That right, makes sense. Right, right. Well, that I, might help. That probably helps with the inflated numbers a little bit, possibly. I briefly touched on that just on this just now, but Arkham Knight has actually been pulled from PC sales because of how bad it is, how badly implemented, and how many issues they're experiencing. I mean, they're selling a lot of copies of this game. You know, they've got a lot of people playing it. They've had last time I looked or last time I heard reported, it was eight thousand. It was three thousand last week, but a couple of days into that, it was eight thousand negative reviews on Steam. If you guys want to just have a quick look and tell me if it's it's updated or not, that's brilliant. But. They've, re- they've released it, and basically they're saying that uh, they're, they released a patch on the 27th of June, which addressed crap issues. I mean, nothing to do with the main issues. Um, th- you know, things like they've corrected an issue that was causing Steam to re-download the game, uh, fixed a crash that was happening for some users when exiting the game. You know, not actually even po- proved any performance stuff, but they're saying that they're looking at it as a priority. All of their resources are currently going into it, so any patches for consoles are basically getting put off until they've fixed, you know, the main PC issues at the moment. 12,399... <laughs> oh. Sorry? I'm looking on Steam here. 12,393 reviews, mostly negative. I'm um, looking on Steam. 7,574 negative reviews. All right. Yeah, so that's in, in total. The top one saying even AAA developers are making early access games now. <laughs> <laughs> that, to be fair, it's, it's complete... I don't see. I haven't seen any main ish, major issues apart from the performance so far. It's a complete game, apart from these, you know, this port issue, and that's been done by another studio. I'm not giving them any kind of leeway, I suppose. But still, look at those fucking recommended specs, though. That's just ridiculous. It is a very good looking game, though. I will say. It, oh yeah. It's... The, the, is it, the, the is lighting it like and twice as good it. looking as anything else that's on the market at the minute. No, that obviously yeah, it's not, not twice it, as good. It's, that, that's just bad programming, then. and it stands the reason it is because it just runs a load of shite on the PC. On the PC, but it's a port issue. It, I mean, it's running fine on consoles. It's yeah. a port issue, which is technical problems. It's nothing to do with. I mean, it's nothing to do with. Yeah, so. That's what. Uh, hmm. So I just to remind argue this, to be fair. Um, how they make. Uh, console games, what platform do they make them on? PC. Well, yeah, they usually run it on PC, but they'll build so, them to consoles. What you're telling me is that they've made a game, they converted it to consoles, and instead of using the original game, no. they then took the console version and then converted that no, back no, to they'll, PC. They'll, they'll, they'll build a game and they'll run it on the developer box for whatever platform that they're, pa- they're building it for, so the Xbox One platform or the PlayStation 4 platform. There'll be testing done on those, and then Obviously, whoever's ported the PC version from whatever code base they had, so they've taken that code base, ran it on the PC, and then they've not done enough QA, they've not done enough testing, they've not done enough, you know, testing across multiple PC configurations, etc. So, Sounds like they haven't done any. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's it, it's okay for me, but it's certainly not acceptable. I have to be honest. It does lag a lot when I'm, especially when I'm in the Batmobile and I'm driving around, and it feels like a lot of the cornering that I do in the Batmobile I don't feel like I'm in control of it and I don't know if that's a game thing or Sam what do you think um, I feel the Bat- Batmobile controls pretty well actually right well it, it feels like I'm not in control when I'm going around corners and I'm doing the power slides and things like that you know there's a lot of people um, on the reviews that are saying that uh, it doesn't that the, the PC version actually doesn't look anywhere near as good as for example the PS4 uh, pardon me version I don't know. Something, I done something's gone seriously wrong there, hasn't it? I, I was actually it's quite... missing a lot of shaders and effects. They've... Yeah, it's just not being occlusion and rain texture, apparently. I was what I was going to say was the rain in the game is 
is amazing because it's raining the whole time and it's just like it looks <laughs> like you can reach out and touch it it's that kind of good rain you're like wow this looks really cool um and it's it's so seem weird that it, anything like this should be running better on a console than on a pc it's just not what you expect at all yeah well i said so far i'm liking the game i hope they improve it in the coming weeks, um, I think I'll probably concentrate on finishing The Witcher before I really plow more into Arkham Knight. I think. Uh, I, what's unfortunate about it is that this is a, it's it's becoming a very very common thing, and I I'm, you know, a fan of this studio because they made these Arkham games that I really really like, but it's quite a, a common thing now for a game to be released that it, you know if it's not ready to be released on PC. Don't release it on PC like they did with GTA 5. Delay it if you have to and make it right. Or just have the game out when it's ready for everybody. It's a common thing. That early access joke thing you said on Steam, it's not It's not untrue. They just release games that aren't ready. People buy them and it's like, oh, we'll patch it a month down the line. It's like, tell you what, why don't you release it a month down the line when it's fucking ready so that we don't have to pay for shit that's not ready? Yeah. It's not. It's not fair, really. To, I, to say you give me you give me like forty odd quid. I don't know how much it is on Steam. Give me forty odd quid for this product that isn't going to perform the way that a forty odd pound computer game would have done on the PlayStation Two, for example. If you bought a PS Two game, put the disc in, and it didn't fucking work. You take the game back, and it's fucked. The the, the QA process now. Uh, when when I say QA, it's quality assurance process. Is, is utterly atrocious because of the internet, because people can download patches, day one patches, day one DLC, day one every... They just, they, they release a game, and it's it's prevalent across all platforms now, not just PC. I mean, PC seems to be suffering a little bit more than consoles, but it's still, it's still, it still happens. I mean, look at Skyrim on the PS4 when that came out. That was horrific, wasn't it? It was, oh, it was, it, after they patched it, again, it became playable, but there was bits when you'd, you'd like, go outside, and you'd just be sat there, like, make a cup of tea whilst it loads outside. Yeah. It's terrible. And then you get a lag where you'd just be like, right, I'm going to go over here. No, is it crashed? Has it crashed? No, it's lagging. Yeah. And then oh, it, would, the, it would move again. All of the Elder Scrolls games have had similar issues. Morrowind used to crash the desktop randomly. I think it still does. It literally, you'd be playing it, and it would just close. Yeah. And all you'd have no best. save or anything. Yeah. Um, Oblivion had problems as well with loading and crashing when loading sections. Yeah, Oblivion crashed on my PS3 quite a lot. <clears throat> so, uh, Oblivion crashed on my 360 once, which was weird. I thought my 360 had uh, Red Ring of Death, but it luckily hadn't. But, yeah, but that's just a, 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 what we've ranted about before, but it's just... It's hard, it's hard to say vote with your wallet when you know that actually once the product is ready, it's actually good. So you might say, well, vote with you, delay voting with your wallet, vote with your wallet once it's ready, I guess. I don't know, it's hard, it's a hard thing to to find what the solution is to this problem, but it's happening well, all the time. I know, and this, I suppose the solution is to not support the studios that are continuously doing this, and we're talking about the Ubisofts of the world. I mean, EA seemed to be pretty good at releasing, I mean, when I say that, Battlefield what? Hardline, Battlefield Hardline was horrific, and so was Battlefield 4, wasn't it? Please don't give a year no, any okay, kind of. Like, who who anticipates that when Star Wars Battlefront comes out, it's going to be running smooth as silk on day one? Yeah. Well, exactly. th th maybe that will because the, you know they've got all of the bugs and stuff ironed out from Battlefield Three, Battlefield Four. That I d you, I, you really shouldn't be so optimistic. You know, uh, it's maybe not. Maybe do not. That. <laughs> it's going to be better than, the, than a, a title which has been written to order with a new engine and stuff, though. And dice. Uh, Dicey. They're not brilliant, but they're better than EA's general software houses that make stuff for them. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on from Arkham Knight. So I've I've played a few other games this week. I've been playing a bit more Plants vs Zombies too. I thought I wasn't going to play any more, but um, I, I I've been playing a little bit more, and I've actually figured out some tactics. Basically, I've opened up a few more levels. I haven't paid anything, you know. It's, I know I've said it was complained. It was a bit of pay to play, but I've opened up a few more levels, and there's a few extra plants that you can get that actually. They kind of consume multiple lanes at once when you, you know, like fire plants and stuff, and um, it makes it a lot easier when you get overwhelmed by zombies. So I'm actually playing it and advancing now, so it's not as bad as I initially thought it was. <clears throat> um, played a bit of Terraria because there's a new Terraria patch, which we'll talk about in the new section. 
only today and only about 10 minutes just to kind of have a quick look and it's got some it's got some cool little new features but there's 800 new items and all kinds of other stuff with it so with this new patch so it'll be i think it'll be a case of starting a new world and you know seeing what's new um, yeah are you are you it looks like you're up for that then Luke? i'm so up for that i'm personally right i did yes 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 right. in the document. fair enough fair enough um well i still ask could i said i no, my server's in a bit in bits at the moment, but we could just play to gas So, is that um, is that a free patch that they've added? That's that again. That's a free content that they've added. And you're not having to pay extra for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's free content. Not only that, well, the thing is, what I read about what happened, and basically, they at one point they said they weren't going to do any more updates for it, but then it's changed management, and apparently, there's a new guy um, or a new team who are going to be taking it forward. But basically, the 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 community really wants this game to keep going. It's got a huge community, and so they've decided they're going to do it. It's had dedicated it's servers great. made by community members. It's had mods. It's had pa little patch not patches, but all kinds of... Oh, I've just lost everybody. Oh, dear. I've just lost everybody as well. Yeah, everyone's, I did as well. Everyone turn the, the, the mics back on. I don't know what happened there. Your, your cameras, turn them all back on. Yep. It, yeah, that so, was very strange. Turn it off and then back on again, then. Or I might <laughs> have to go for a break. Have you got me back? No, right, I'm just going to put us on a break, guys. Just uh, bear with us for two or three minutes. You'll enjoy this music. Right, sorry about that, everybody. We're back. Yay. We, we've just, just had a million problems with, uh, with Skype, so sorry about that. We were talking about Terraria. Hmm. We were spuffing about Terraria. Yes. Well, what I was going to say is that um, the 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 patch that came along is two point eight megs, which I love. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I looked at it. I looked at the download, and it went one percent, two percent, one hundred percent, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> Wait, when was the last time I downloaded a two point eight meg patch? I don't think the quick one patch was that small. That was the size of an MP three, uh, one hundred and twenty eight kilobit MP three. Half MP. That was song two by Blur. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> brilliant. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm again quite looking forward to playing it. I'll be uh, I'll be well up for uh, getting the server back up. And so we should we stay? It's probably better we start a new world, though, isn't it? Thinking about yeah, it. I was, yeah, we will start to start a new world. It'll be a little bit of a pain in the ass that we don't have all of the amenities that we were used to flying around the map. Well, no, no, I, I was gonna, I was considering there. using my old character still. All right, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I have to be honest with you. I've played it a few times as a new character with the fucking wooden pickaxe or whatever it is. And honestly, after you've been you've been using the fucking power axe, it's yeah, it's no. I'm I'm still up for doing it. If you want to do expert mode as well, because that's supposed to be even harder. I've just uh, I had a pl quick play of that. I'd well, sorry, sir. I started a new world. I haven't played it yet, and I don't know if the dedicated server we were using would be up to date with the patch yet. So no, you need you need a new version. But there's a there's a link to that on the Terraria website. Wicked, cool. See, I would be interested in playing as long as Chris doesn't start just building grotesque uh, architecture. Well, we'll all feature away from my front. <laughs> it was pretty good. That, that, was, an a, that was an accident. Oh, how can you how can you build a tower by accident? <laughs> Look, I started. <laughs> I, just, I actually just sta fall over and go. Oh, you oh, know what? Sorry. Right? Sure, right. I started. I started like quite far to the left, but it ended up because I went so high. I ended up right next to yours when I I built it to the right. You still had your bloody dome, your dome that was the size of Russia, by the way. Yeah, but I built it away from you guys, so I had plenty of space, a nice what view, and everything. What a sensible <laughs> person would have done, right? What a nice per sensible person would have done is if the landscape was there, my dome was here. If you would have built there. You should have built that way, you, you, not look, that way look, toward me. There was also a problem in that the snow biome was just to the left of you as well, and I needed yeah, some. I wanted green. I planned that that way. <laughs> Chris is the sort of person who draws his picture, he starts at the top right of the page and just got shit. Yeah, and then moves right. Like, oh, I haven't got enough room for that. New page. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to uh, just start a new world with that. That'd be quite cool. That's, We'd be able to know, space our things out a bit that, more. That's exciting, because I'm up for that. I'm well up for that. Yeah. I'm well up to play that. I'm up for that. I, I, I really love Terraria. I'm getting those... I love Terraria. Feeling just, oh, he loves Terraria, me. I'm getting that... <laughs> Terraria. Like, Sorry. I'm getting that feeling <laughs> of nostalgia. Like, you know, when you remember something being better than it was, except this was only, like, what, six months ago that we played it, if that? But it was awesome, and there's it new bosses awesome. and, and new items, and I mean, I'm, 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 I've got the best armor though. That's the problem, and it's like. Well, so now because there'll be new armor. Uh, 
but I, I did nail everything. I, I just ran from the le- from the right hand side of the world to the left hand side of the world, and nailed everything in expert mode. So, but there's new stuff. There's new um, biomes as well with new enemies oh, right. and stuff, and the invasions have bosses in them as well. Ooh, well, so, um, so sort of the old ones, but only some of them. Yeah, but now even the goblin one has a mini boss, and the um, the pirate one has a big flying pirate ship that shits on you. Mint. So yeah, there's, there's lots of new stuff. To be fair, even if I started with my character, unless I booted that server up and went on there and emptied some of my chests and got things like um, some of my wires and things like that, because I haven't got any wire on me, I'd have to start again anyway. Because you need to find, you have to get the mechanic in order to get wires and yeah, build contraptions in your base and stuff. But yeah, yeah there's there's some really handy things. Is um, you can stack to all nearby chests as well now, so you can just <laughs> don't throw all of your stuff into a load of chests that are nearby. There's also really cool, like uh, just even aesthetic things like there's new sound effects and there's new graphic and like a few ah. new sprites and things like that it just makes I'm it well feel a bit that. nicer and i think if we do that we should probably record it and do a little bit of a, a building series maybe or something like that I, i'm up for that again I've, I've watched a fair few terraria youtube vids and they've been quite cool quite interesting we could do there's lots of things like special events and things like that like when um terraria runs over halloween for example as always or last year we we did it over halloween and uh, there was pumpkins everywhere and there's uh, over christmas they have uh, special boss invasion modes and things like that it's quite cool Right, so yeah, cool. Yeah. Glad we're up for that. Glad we're up for that. Apart from that, just Savage Lands. Thought I'd just quickly jump onto it and see if they'd made any improvements and I froze to death in about 10 seconds, so <laughs> I uh, <laughs> just left it. It is savage, isn't it? It just lives <laughs> for that part of it. Yeah, they're not lying to you, at least, with no. that title. There's, apparently there's frost giants, not frost giants, um, forest giants in it now as well, and um, various other enemies, so I don't know if it's worth maybe having a look at again. Maybe. Maybe. But, yeah. I know that they fixed the, uh, all the animals running into the sea. Yeah, and it seems a bit more brutal. I ran into a, uh, I ran into a, a wolf, and it looked a lot nicer as well. The wolf, but it's still not beautiful. If you know what I mean, it's still not amazing. Who stops graphics. to admire a wolf? Don't you just hit it until it oh, turns I, red? I, I did hit it until it turned red. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, laughs> anyway, so let's move on to the next section: the way of the exploding list. <laughs> Nice sound effects there. <laughs> Lou's just frozen like that. <laughs> God, I love the interweb. Um, it's so good, isn't it? So this week, have we got any ideas for a list, anybody? Anybody in chat have you any ideas for a list? This is a section where we, we basically talk about, um, talk about the, our favourite things in a game or our worst things in a game. Uh, favourite Witcher 3 <laughs> oils. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Hey, that um, wishes three oils. Hmm. I'd say the necrophage oils. It, yeah, I, 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 I was going to say that. I have to say that because... You can't do this one, for fuck's sake, guys. <laughs> That's it, we've done it. Because there's only eight of them, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Oh, do you and... remember the draconid oil? That was amazing, wasn't it? Let's <laughs> fucking remember the first day I got my um, enhanced necrophage oil. That was a happy day. Did you buy yourself a cake? I actually, I actually opened up some new potions the other day that I didn't. That were brand new. <laughs> Fuck it, stop, Lulux. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that. Was like a preliminary yeah, list. Right. We're going to do another list in a minute. Um, I've got an idea. Um, preliminary list. Now we've we've talked a bit about Batman. What about um, notable um, licensed games like tie-ins? Okay, I already have one. Um, top of my head, Spider-Man. Did it? Yeah, Spider-Man Two specifically. Which I might have talked about before, which it did something that was I still think is really impressive, especially for a game of that era. And it was actually I learned recently that this this was implemented like almost in the last minutes before the game shipped. You had Manhattan Island. Obviously, it was a, a, a smaller version of Manhattan than the real man. It wasn't like one to one or whatever. But you had Manhattan Island. You could web swing around, and every time you fired a web. It, the line actually attached to one of the elements and one of the buildings and you had to swing from that anchor point all the time. That was really cool and it was one of those games where even if I didn't want to play any of the missions, I just swung around the city having fun swinging around New York. It was like, hey! I just saw jumping that around. I saw people just literally just enjoying swinging around the city. It's They've never done it better. They've had a load of Spider-Man games come out since then that have never done it as well as that Spider-Man 2 did. And apparently the PC version of that was terrible, but the console <laughs> versions were good. So the PS2, Xbox, and I think GameCube versions were really good. Uh, but the PC version didn't have that web swinging thing in it at all, I don't think. I don't think you could even do that properly. 
I don't know, I've not played it. There was a Batman game with the Sinclair Spectrum and the 8 bits. Um, Batman the movie. Based, no, not Batman the movie. It was based on the comics. And it had two different games, basically, two different stories on either side. But it was all presented like a comic strip. In that, like, you, you walk through a door and then another little window would open up above that well, that last one and you'd walk into that room. It was kind of a mixture of a sort of a, a puzzle game and a story. Yeah. Um well, I, while you're saying that, I'm going to throw Batman the movie in there for the Commodore 64 because I played it to death and loved it to bits. It was an ba- amazing... Batman was the Cape Crusader. <clears throat> right. Well, so I would imagine that the Commodore 64 one was in the era when uh, every console or every system got its own version of... This is the Batman 1989 Tim Burton uh, movie. I and believe... They were all different. The NES and the Mega Drive were different. The Commodore were probably different. There were ports of it. And I don't know what the I don't know if the Commodore sixty four was an original one, but I think either the Amiga or the Atari had a very very similar game, but it was okay. definitely different in terms of the way that it controlled and the graphics. Um, it, it didn't have the same feel to it as the Commodore sixty four game, but I loved the Commodore sixty four one because that's what I had at home. So, um, but there was I loved the fact that it was one of the first games I played where it had multiple different types of gameplay in it. So you could mm. you, the first level you were in the. Um, Acid plant. What are you? What is he in in Batman the movie? When he when the Joker uh, gets yeah. uh, like the Axis chemical plant. Chemical oh, yeah. plant. Yeah. That's it. And the Joker so, falls into it. Yeah. So basically, the, the the whole premise of the first level is is walking along, killing goons, and then getting to the Joker. Basically, you throw a batarang at the Joker, and he falls in the acid. That's it. That's the end of the level. Um, yeah. And then the next level is the uh, you're in a car, and it's like a top down isometric ish this- kind of. This sounds very similar to the Mega Drive Batman game, which I had, which was quite good. It was quite a straightforward beat em up, but it did have the Batmobile section. And then later on, this penultimate level was the Batwing Bat section. Batwing, yeah, yeah. This was, part of the course, this was part of the course for um, movie tie ins. I mean, it, the, um, the Star Wars tie in games were like this as well. I was going to say, there's been a Robocop few good Star like Wars this. games. There's been a few good ones and a lot of terrible ones as well. I mean, the pod racing game for the Star Wars. Trill- uh, Star Wars um, new trilogy that that was awful but, but uh, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter was supposed to be awesome for its time wasn't it the apparently first, I never played it but apparently one of the first was, yeah. 3D space battle games that they did and apparently it was it was awesome I can't I think that was a PC exclusive I don't know if it was it definitely wouldn't have played it on a Mega Drive put it that way mm. um, I think there's I not that many playing, uh, a game called Robocop vs. the Terminators yeah, I yes. remember that on the Mega Drive. That game's hard. Possibly. Platoon on the Commodore 64. That was a good game as well. That was really difficult, but it was a light gun game. Platoon? Yeah, basically the, the first level was you were walking through... Um, uh, like, you were walking through the tunnels or something like that. I, I can't remember I can't remember the film, so I can't remember what the premise of it is, but you're walking through tunnels and shooting people as you get to different areas. At the end of that level, you then... Oh, were you shooting people, or was it like a first-person game on that point? And then you you go up into the bush, into the Vietnam jungle, and then it's definitely a shooting level. You, you know, uh, gooks or whatever they called them in that. It's, sorry, that it's racist, a bit racist. No, but that's what they called them in the game. <laughs> sorry, I, I didn't mean to come up with a Vietnamese <laughs> military so, forces. Yes, but anyway, they, 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 they pop, Viet Cong. Viet Cong. They, they popped up in the in the back of the the level, and you know, you shot you shot them. And uh, I can't remember the other levels. I don't think I ever I got could, past the second I level. Could, I could tell you this one thing about Platoon: it is not the kind of movie that should have a fucking game made about it. <laughs> and if it oh. is, it's it should be a dark psychological like. It, existential crisis kind of game not a go and shoot the bad guys kind of game because that's not what that film is about no, no. Um, the the one what, the great escape on the uh, spectrum oh, specifically great game. I, I didn't play it on the commodore i don't think there was a commodore version but i played it on my mate spectrum and it was amazing it Again, looked the same on basically all formats anyway it was a port from the spectrum version of the amstrad version can't remember i think it was the spectrum version right but i, I played that and loved that game loved fantastic that game. game june on the amiga Never played it. Ah, uh, I've talked about it before, haven't we? Now, was June and Amiga the RTS one, or was that June 2? Uh, June 2 was June the RTS. 2. RTS. June 2 was RTS, yeah. But the June, June 1 was like a... Uh, wasn't it like a storybook one or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was kind of like a... Point and click sort of thing. Yeah, it? that's yeah. What, yeah, sort of an adventure game, or whatever you called them back then. June 2, I was thinking of the RTS. Um... Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. I've been yeah. told that's amazing, but I never played it. It's a good game, and they've done a HD remake. Um, 
to the 360, which was packaged along with Dark Athena. But yeah, apparently they're both good, aren't they, those games? Yeah, they're both pretty good games. Stealthy as well. Mm. First person stealth, right? Yeah. Well, there's a few cutscenes and a few kind of action scenes where you do it in third person, but the majority mm. of it's first. The reason I brought up these tie-ins is because, generally speaking, they were considered to be bad games. Yeah, they, but, they were no, like you, you said tie-ins licensed just, game. Well, licensed tie-ins, same sort of thing. Basically, a movie would well, come out or something, and they would make a game to cash in in it. And it, yeah. it's basically st- loads of separate, independent, two or three man teams would make their versions of it for the various platforms. They'd all be released as full price games, and they were literally just cash ins, and they all followed a similar format. They, um, they, do you know they seem to have, they seem to not be doing that as much these days? I'm trying to think. Like, I believe there was a, a cash in game of the first Transformers movie, but I don't think they've been doing it with the sequels. There's been no. I don't think they. I think they might have done like an Iron Man one and two game, but I don't think there's an Avengers game. Not that's tied yeah. to the movie. These you know, like they is, uh, not... they've got the um, or the Avengers Infinity stuff, haven't they? They've have like... they? But is it is it a proper tie-in or is it just like? Well, it's that... it's released alongside the movie. They get new characters, right, don't okay. they? New toys every time one of the new films comes out. One of the massive right. cash cow. Very one of the ca- the big kind of cash in things that I remember was the Harry Potter games that came out with each movie, and no yeah. one ever saw any gameplay of them or knew exactly I, what they looked like. I, you just no, got I some did. CG Harry Potter. Th- oh, you see, you played them, did you? Uh, well, my, obviously, I read the Harry Potter <coughs> books, and I quite like Harry Potter because my sister I was reading well. them, and I read them. Um, I read all four of them in one week when I was like off sick from college because they were the first two in particular. You could bash through in like a couple of hours; they're so short. Um, and I got got into it, and then I think we rented the first Harry Potter game, right where you could rent games from video shop, and we started playing oh, it. Wow. And we we rented the first Harry Potter game for the PlayStation, like yeah. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for the PlayStation. It's been and it was like, oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you thought you genuinely misheard me. I walked right into that one. Um, <laughs> it was it was very bland. It was literally like really bad. You know when you had really bad sound alikes, they were like. Go over there, Harry, <laughs> and you just like you climb up, you climb up a bookcase, and you'd be like, "We got the Oleviosa." <laughs> really crap, <laughs> really, really, uh, really bland and re- the epitome of the mediocre Titan game. It was just that I completed it. It was just like, yeah, that happened. <laughs> sort of, sort of game. That was a waste. <laughs> it was all right. Never it wasn't offensively. Three hours back. It wasn't offensively terrible, and it, it worked mechanically well. It was just bland as fuck. Postman Pat. On the Commodore 64 again. All of the, all of my f- my favourite tie-ins are on the Commodore 64. And then his that sequel, of course, Postal 2. <laughs> 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 Direct sequel. <laughs> Spiritual successor. <laughs> um, and uh, what was the other one? There's a uh, another another tie-in license that I just thought Pop- I forgot. Popeye, the Popeye games on the Sinclair Spectrum were fantastic. Oh, I played them. I played that. I can't remember too Huge much. Huge cartoony yeah. characters in it. Is that to tie in with the Robin Williams live action film, or is no, that just, it, to, just it, a it, cartoon? It, this, there was a guy, um, I, I think it was one guy who did these games. He did um, Trapdoor as well, and they all had a very, very specific look. There was another one, Gregory Loses His Clock. Oh my god, at Trapdoor. That was amazing, that game. I loved that game. Was that a dungeon management game? What would no, you, how no. Would uh, you, well, like? Don Priestley. Don Priestley was the guy's name. Again, this was this is one that was different on every platform. But the Commodore sixty four version was a uh, you were, you played as as Bert. Bert. Uh, and you basically you had to just go around and solve puzzles, and it was a case of picking up worms from the from the sewer yeah, area. Yeah, get eggs them so you can, can make a fried egg. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, I didn't, I, well, we didn't have that in ours, I don't think. But yeah, there was a few different. We did. No, that was the, there was, it was, it was yeah. the same in all the versions. I'm pretty sure it was the same puzzles because but, you let um, this thing out with a trapdoor and it'd lay an egg if you did so. Yeah. Like a shiv is shocked, out, I think. Yeah, and you use that egg to make an omelette. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there was a, there was a lot of puzzles in it though, from what I remember, and there's a lot of different rooms. Bloody hell, <laughs> games were shit. They were shit, but they were awesome pretty... as well. <laughs> yeah, I got the guard and pick up some worms. <laughs> Imagine that on Steam now, worm picking simulator 2015. Yeah, that actually happens yeah, though. It doesn't probably it? is out there. It probably is out there. <laughs> Toast. I remember Toast um, oh, bread or whatever it's called. Speaking of, uh, we we're talking about Harry Potter tie-in, another sort of kids game tie-in that was actually quite good, that I think I rented on the PlayStation and then bought it, it was Toy Story 2, uh, where you played as Buzz Lightyear, it was a 3D, um, uh, you know, action platformer type game, with quite, with very big levels, there was a lot of climbing, and because you had the wings, you could sort of jump off high things and then do your little, 
wing thing and he's like he can do jump off really high obstacles and you tra- you basically went through the story of the game so you went to try and find Woody and you ended up I mean the last level was like on the um, in the baggage collection thing if you remember the end of Toy Story 2 and that was really quite a cool game and it had loads of little bits from the film like and when he was Buzz Lightyear was fighting bad guys he'd be like you are a sad strange little man and you have my biddy say oh. stuff like that it was good fun mm-hmm. there's a, a little gift there to share with the um, share with the chat just about the logic of the uh, the Toy Story games for the PlayStation. God, I place that in now. There's um, I think we've mentioned it before, but the Lion King on the SNES oh, specifically. The Mega Drive version I had that was actually pretty good. No, I, I hate I hate all those Disney games and the the cartoon ones like uh, Tasmania and stuff. They're all terrible. Oh, Roadrunner platformers. There was an Land old Roadrunner was... game on the Commodore as well that I. I I didn't own myself, but my friend owned, and we we pl- we we again tried to play it. And f- from what recollection, you have to you have to basically obviously avoid wily e. coyote, but you you had to eat grain on the way there. But it was quite good. It was there was quite a lot of like character not character um, advancement and building your building your rock runner up and stuff. You know, making sure if he survives. You were, if there wasn't a section in that game where you had to paint a tunnel on a, on a rock. And then run through it, and, it then the, and then Wiley Coyote slams into it, then it's not a game worth buying, in my opinion. I can't remember. I, but I, I remember. would have rather played that game from the point of view of Wiley Coyote, though, to like, yeah, build that, the traps. Yeah, that would have been like falling off fucking thing. cliffs every five seconds and dying. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> there's a game that you guys are missing that I would have thought you have said so far. Do you want What's to that? clue us in? Uh, Goldeneye. Oh! Of course. Of course, yeah. not one of it's not just movie exactly tie-ins; it's licensing. So I've been looking. I've been thinking outside yeah, that, the box here. That yeah, is the you, example. You've backed on about being one of your favourite games before, so I thought it would have been quite relevant. I had a yeah. lot of fun with it. I wouldn't say it's one of my favourites. Certainly wouldn't. It was. It was one of my favourites at the time. I was addicted to it at the time. Uh, it's not aged well, but a lot of first-person shooters like that don't age. Don't age very well. I mean, the graphics yeah. are awful now, aren't they? But they, they, when you think about what it was doing at the time then that's the that's the achievement it had i mean it was an interesting well put together uh, game you know that had interesting levels and interesting concepts in those levels and cool little puzzles again like using your watch to break locks and things like that you couldn't do yeah. that kind of thing then cool music as well in that yeah. game which is the music was very much inspired by the film which i also thought had really good music uh, and they sort of carried that spirit onward into the game, which is quite nice. And very cool multiplayer as well. We can't miss that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of Friday nights spent with friends. Yes. Facility. Facility remote yes. mines. Facility, oh. or facility, facility man with the golden gun was good as well. See, Just a base to get to that golden gun. I hated the man with the golden gun. I hated that mode. It was all about the clop for me. All about the clop. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> right, so should we move on to news then, or are we? Uh, uh, is there anything, any other, any other notable licenses that you or the audience want to mention uh, before we move on? There's probably quite a lot, but I think there's a lot. But so there are bits of good ones. They're generally very bland and, and forgetful and wishy-washy and shit. But, but there are some that, good ones out Remember there. that movie tie-ins is distinctly different from licenses because licensed games aren't always just cash cows trying to cash in on, you know, like these Bat- Batman games. They're not movie tie-ins, really, are they? I mean, fair no. enough, the first ones came out around the same time as Christopher, Christopher Nolan was doing his films, but they weren't really related to that at all. I wish no. you'd say Christopher Lloyd, Dad. I'd love to see a Batman <laughs> movie directed by Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> I'd love to see just Christopher Lloyd as Batman. Christopher Reeve as Batman. <laughs> Great Scott! The Joker just got out! Uh, uh, he'd do better as a Joker, wouldn't he? <laughs> if he it would have it made a good Joker in his own way. That would have been pretty cool. We'll probably, he's too old to do that now, but that would have been awesome. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we've talked about the first few news stories already in our news list. Um, Minesweeper roguelike. Uh, yeah, um, I just thought it'd be interesting to um, Potato, but I don't think he's in here, but so... None of, none of us are interested in Minesweeper, but yeah, there's a, 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 a roguelike game called Dungelot, which has got a Minesweeper style element to it, and that's it. The well, end. The, the, my favourite thing about that article is the uh, URL Minesweeping in Dungeon Shat. <laughs> Dungelot Shat. <laughs> Chat, Dungelot Shattered Lands, the full title. <laughs> 
Okay, so, um, sorry, what? But if you're not around, he'll probably pop in in a minute, won't he? Yeah. That was just for him. That was just for him. Ah, we didn't talk about this last week. I actually do have the physical Gwent decks come in for Xbox One stuff in the uh, in the document that I I'm missed sure out we earlier. mentioned this last week. I'm sure we talked about it because I wouldn't have talked about it with anyone else. No, no, we were talk- we were talking about wanting a physical Gwent deck, and then about mm. two days after, I actually found this article and I was like, really? Oh, it's already out. It's already a thing. But there are, as Steve said, there are already people who printed them out. I couldn't actually find from the Reddit links and stuff that I found anywhere that people have made it available to print out. Um, there's a oh, I've got uh, some PDFs I can send you. Send them to me because I may actually get some printed. Yeah. But I've I need, I also got links for a couple of places that are selling um, the decks and the place mats and all that type. Surely of stuff. there's legalities towards this. Is yeah, the reason why people are doing it for use, themselves? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure what these are is people who have bought a special edition and are selling part of it. There is that as well, but I don't think that there's any place mats or anything like that available. Are you sure? I don't. I, I didn't read that the place mats are included in the special edition, just the Gwent packs. But I could be wrong there. It may even be on that link that I've just posted. To be fair, the point is, is if, if they've made there Gwent is, packs, there's the they'd... place mats on there. Right. So basically, what I need to do is run the run Witcher three and four K, take a screenshot of the placemat, Photoshop out or give it to Lou so he can Photoshop professionally um, out all of the <laughs> rubbish that we don't need in it, and then make some counters, so we can do like double points for certain cards and things like that, which would make more sense, and then we can actually play it in in the real world. It might be easy just to actually get the asset files and get all the textures for the cards and print them out. Um, if sure, if someone's can... created assets explorer for it, it won't be in a proprietary format, I imagine. We could have a look. We could have a look. That might be bre- breaching a license agreement, though. Well, yeah. anything is. If you're printing out their designs, then no, I just found someone on the internet and I'm printing it out. No idea what you're talking well, about. If if they're including <coughs> um, the Gwent deck and the placemat in a special edition, then that means that they've made them, which means they could make more and then just say pay us and you can buy one what they've done um is it's a an xbox one exclusive and i was reading up on it and it's just you know a lot of people have asked why aren't you releasing this separately they said look we are concentrating 100 percent on the digital releases of our games we're, we're concentrating on the game we're not interested in like getting we may in the future but right now we're interested in the game and and making it the best playing experience that we can um, the reason that we've given these Gwent decks with the Xbox One is because we're supporting our partner. That's their official line, is that they're supporting Xbox One as a partner. And that's all it is. That, so, that Gwent deck, is what they're essentially saying there is the Gwent deck is, in a, is, is as a the physical thing, is a timed exclusive for the Xbox One that we'll all get later on. Yeah, maybe. Now, that just that makes, me, makes me ask another question, actually briefly while we're on this. What's your favourite Gwent deck so far? I normally have more success with the Northern Realms. Northern Realms is my probably most complete, but I have a favourite uh, that isn't that. Mine, mine that actually has been the best for me that I've seen to be able to be adaptable to those situations, that's in my Nilfgaardian Guardian Empire deck. But it could be to do with what you've got. It, yeah. You know, what hero cards you've got, what spies you've got, what... Because there's certain things that you can have, like, that yeah, just make I've... you annihilate all your opponents. I don't know. I can I can consistently beat anybody with any of the decks now, but you have to play different styles with each of the decks. But yeah. my favourite is the Nilfgaardian Empire, only because I've got so many spy cards with them. The See, I've cards got spy many cards many. with the Northern Realms, and I've got a couple of spy cards where they're actually either one or a zero power. I yes, they I, work pretty well. I had that until recently, but I've actually got some spy cards that are actually level nines and level eights, which is better than you think it is. A lot better if you play in a certain way, but I'm not going to give you my tactic. Do you? Sorry, Lou, you don't play here. I want to trounce you. I think Lou, do you know what? What? Are you using the decoy. Uh, yes, use the decoy as well. Yeah. Do you know what these are, Lou? Do you know what the spy card is? Yeah, yeah, I know it works. Okay. Uh... That's right. If anybody in the chat doesn't know, the spy card in Gwent um, is a card that you put down on your opponent's side, and it adds to their score. But you get to draw two cards on your own deck. So basically, it's more. It's, it's my favourite one. If I've got a spy card, I'm like yes. And if I've got a decoy, and they use a spy card, yes. But it depends if your opponent has a decoy or they've got any yeah. any draw from their own deck cards or restore yeah, from yeah. your deck. There's a lot of different tactics to it, and that's why it's cool. 
the Nilfgaardian Empire, I, I can't remember if it's the third or the fourth leader card, is you get to take one of your opponent's cards from a discard pile. I'm like, that's an amazing ability to have that I use in every yes, game. I've got, yeah, that's, that's one of my favourites, but there's a, there's a better monster perk, leader perk, and I can't remember what it is now. Is it... There's, there's one where you, you discard two cards and draw one from your deck, but mm. that isn't very good. The one after that is something like you can draw a card from your own deck as well. Anyway, I like the um, cancel leader ability, but I haven't actually opened... That's one I haven't unlocked yet. That's the one leader ability I haven't unlocked. One of the things I notice about uh, fighting against people who use monster decks is they normally end up with like ridiculously high scores. Yes. In the it multiplies. Yeah. yeah. But That's you can, when you need to have uh, yeah, your weather conditions help. I don't use yeah. them. I don't use weather conditions. Or Scorch. I don't need to. Or Scorch. Scorch, Scorch only takes out the highest level character. Or the oh, there's that, um, yeah, there's, that but... card as, so there's that card as well, which you can use in all your decks. And it's, a, it's I can't remember what it's called, but it's three. it's got three warriors on it. And it's a level seven card. And it's it's a level seven close combat card that also acts as a Scorch. Yeah, but only, that only also takes great. out your... your um, that only takes out your the, the opponent's if they're above ten. Highest thing, yeah. I've, I've actually fell into that trap a few times when I've been like, "Oh, I'll wipe it out," and it hasn't wiped anybody out. I've also made the mistake very early on. I've learned from that. But if you use a scorch card when when one of your cards is the highest on the board, you lose a yeah. card. I, I I was very angry with myself. I was like, "God, <laughs> I can't believe I've just done that." I'm actually at a point now where even when I make mistakes, I tend to win. I'm getting. I'm getting amazing at it. I'm fucking loving it. And I really, really want to play someone human that isn't predictable. Although the high stakes tournament was very, very hard. It was, it was, it was, they play differently. They must have an extra level of AI in that. It was good, the high stakes one. I'm, I'm hoping there's another high stakes one in Skellige. Uh, there's, there's more there cards you can win, but I haven't found a high stakes one yet. There's some quite hard matches there. Like. Good. I want some hard matches. So the only problem is, if they do release a physical Gwent set, then does that mean that everyone's going to have the same deck? I thought about that as well. Well, yeah, but does it matter? Because you draw, you, you make up a deck from 30 Yeah, but there's some cards, cards that I've got that you won't have or that Sam won't have and vice versa, and that's what makes it interesting because you all of a sudden you'll be like, what the fuck is that? Just but have, you not, have you not noticed that when you play the opponents, uh, as you, when you start the game, most of the opponent decks are similar to yours then when you start fighting merchants even some of the earlier merchants if you go back and fight them with your better decks they actually have better cards yeah it's it levels the, the gwent stuff out even though they're not as high level players if you know the, there's blatantly levels of ai within it mm. yeah there is but there's also complete sets of the gwent cards so they don't just randomly generate the level on the card so they're, there's a complete set and all it's doing is as you as you're leveling up and getting a better deck it's just picking ones from higher up in the, in the, the full but deck. it's all about your it's all about especially when you're playing as someone like monsters or even the um score to sco 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 tell yeah sco tell sco sco tell. um if you're playing as either of those where you draw stuff from your deck when you put a card down that makes a big difference to what deck you pick pick yeah in yeah. the first place so there's it's even if you had full sets of cards, it's up to you how what yeah, deck which you ones pick. to put in your active deck. You could have the full deck if you want, I believe. But I think it would be better if it wasn't guaranteed that everyone had exactly the same range of cards to choose from. Well, have you pl have you heard of Magic: The Gathering? Uh, no, what's that? Well, okay, sorry. You, <laughs> have you have you played it, or do you know of the rules in any I've, capacity? I've played it a few times. I've not now. I haven't Terrible. played it, but I've got a very good friend who plays it a lot, and he's trying to explain some of the rules to me. And it sounds kind of similar, but the way that the way that works is, yes, you collect cards, but essentially you buy booster packs, and yeah. then those booster packs are kind of... See, everyone in the team's got a booster pack, and you can team up with two... You can have two versus two, or one versus one, or whatever. And you all put the booster packs together for some, of the, some type of game, anyway. And then you pick from those, and you get new cards from those. But you get new cards from your opponent's booster packs as well occasionally. So what you should do is just release a mobile game that links in uh, your save game, gets all your cards, has them on your phone, then you can just play your friends with them. I well, agree. This is where I think that would be cool. This is where Hearthstone shines, isn't it? Because that is very much that. Yeah. But the, you, problem, but, the problem with Gwen is that, like Gwen. Sam said earlier, you've got to do all the calculations. It's going to be a fiddly as hell card game to play, I reckon. 
It would. That would be the thing that would slow it down because because you so your numbers are going up and down so much with all the effects cards that you can use, and you've got your multipliers and your scorches and the da 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 da. You got to be there, being like taking notes as well, or having a notepad, or someone's got a tablet out or and a laptop, and you're just making a note of where the score is for each person or every single hand that's you, played. You forget how you're forgetting something quite fundamental to card games and board games how complicated does some do some games get um risk how complicated does that get when you play it how complicated does it. hey not played it well it, it can get really complicated that's my point even monopoly can get complicated when you start getting loads of hotels and stuff and you've got mortgages going out and you've got you know all the different calculations you have to do you just have a notepad or you, or you have a calculator if you're really, really crap at maths. I, I, I think it'd be a pain in the ass. If, like, for instance, if you had a full row on but, the, um, and then you put applied a weather card which ganked all of their numbers, apart from certain ones like the hero cards which don't get affected, and some of them are doubled up so they double their scores, you're going to be there for ages. I agree. And then someone uses I, I, clear skies and it's like, oh, fuck's sake. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But... But there will be ways you can do that with counters. So you can basically have a pool of counters that you have picking out from the match. And, you know, uh, just making the game not as portable and accessible. Like, it's not a case of just walking around with something in your pocket. Right, I haven't now got, got to, to take I haven't, counters. I haven't got to my point yet. My point is, is that the, one of the, the main fun points of playing a board game or a card game is playing with friends, having a drink and having a laugh with them. It's do that not, with a chair. Yeah. Do that with your phones or a pad or something. Okay, I'm, yeah, not, I, I'm not now saying that we we can't do this on pads and and get on, on, on even online to be fair, but the, the being physically in a room with someone and playing a game of poker or playing a game of of Monopoly or, or whatever, I, I find that much more interesting. I don't care how long these games take; they might take five, six hours. I agree. I just think that the the the, the manual labour of all that like, calculating the, the different scores and stuff with Gwent specifically would be a pain in the ass. Where it isn't a pain in the ass of poker because there's not a lot to it. No. You do your own calculations for your own hand and that's it. I yeah. agree, but I, I don't it, see that much of a problem with it, personally. It also makes you have to think about the fact that everybody in The Witcher 3 is fucking genius at mental arithmetic. Like, they're <laughs> super quick at it. Because the people, people that work it out is just... Read. Yeah, you've got like, you've got like, greetings! And you sat there playing <laughs> thing with him. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. Hey. <laughs> like, half a second, he's got all his calculations worked out. And so is Geralt, obviously, just as good. There you go. But as with any, as with any game as well, you, you learn patterns and things like that as you play it more, so you'd get more used to doing the calculations. I know it's fairly dynamic. Mm. Like, no, I agree. It would be That's easier true. to play online, but I still wouldn't have a problem playing physically with friends. But there would need to be some kind of clever, as I said, clever counter system that would be like, instead of having to calculate everything and go, right, okay, so I'm putting down a... a, a Blizzard card or whatever you call them. You, Biting you could. Biting Frost. You could, you could buy the physical deck and then play, have it like some way to sync that up with your thing so that you go, right, I put this card down here and I put it down on my thing as well and then it works mm. it out for me. This would be perfect, a perfect application for the HoloLens for augmented reality. Mm. Yeah. It would if actually. they recognise the cards and replace the numbers on the cards in your vision, that would be perfect. Well, it wouldn't even be that. It'd just be playing the game in augmented reality. You wouldn't have to replace well, no, the numbers. Well, no, you use physical cards. But the, the numbers, with the, the scores can it, be changed based with oh, the right. uh, reality. <laughs> you could you could sit you could sit with a mate and you'd both be having instead of having a Gwent deck, you'd have a you have a augmented reality headset on, and then you play Gwent in the same room with each That's other. That's an expensive game of Gwent, that isn't it? <laughs> well, no, I mean, you'd have physical Gwent That's cards, but the augmented game. augmented reality would fill in all of the the stats. All, all twenty uh, dollar twenty credits that you get, or whatever it is, orans. So you'd essentially have blank cards, and then it would all, and then it would have put like the thing on them. I don't know. It could do, but I think it's better if it just calculated. It did all the kind of the hard work and left you with a physical card that you could show people and stuff. That's again, that's to be fair. The way I'm talking about it is probably less of a waste of the hollow because basically <laughs> you just say, "Be a fast calculator at Gwent for me that I put on my head." <laughs> yeah. I can't be asked with mental, with mental arithmetic. Do it for me. Can't be asked saying it. Never mind doing it. <laughs> Actually, no. When you, if you think about it, when you, if you're playing as monsters, and then you draw a card that is, uh, like a unique, um, a multi-draw card. Called? Yeah. 
whatever you call them, yeah, you, you, you draw that, and say you've got 20 in your deck, you'd have to shuffle through fucking 50 cards, find them yeah. and put them down, so that would be a bit of a, a bore, wouldn't it? Not just the calculations. Yeah. No, yeah. It's only the cards that are in your active deck that get taken on when you get a... Uh, yeah, but that can still be... United uh, Forces. Yeah, but say so you've still got 30. That, you could have 50 in that deck if you want. There's no... I don't think there's a have, limit. Yeah. Have a lot. There's a limit there's for how many hero cards and a limit to how many... Uh, a, a minimum cards. amount of cards and special cards. But 10 special cards, isn't it? And I think it's 10 hero cards as well. Yeah. Maybe. But, yeah. I think the main problem... Anyway. I think the main problem would be maintaining a list of your own cards, though, if, if that was the game, collecting them and... Yeah. Being honest as well, not having you know, ca making sure people's cards weren't counterfeit every time you played a match with them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Talked a lot about Gwen, haven't we? Yes, we have. Right, moving on. Uh, Terraria 1.3 patch we talked about. We haven't talked yep. about the features though, have we? We have mentioned some of the features. So we've got 800 new items. We've got a you new portal that. gun. Portal, I don't know what that is. That's, there's something on the video. I'll place the video. I in watched chat. the video. Yeah, he basically shoots a portal at the floor, and the guy falls through it and appears somewhere else and gets killed by a giant skull. All right, I didn't. I didn't actually see mm. what was going on there, but um, we've got new bosses in there. Obviously, Terraria is well known for its bosses. It's got a camera mode, which I think is just like a 2D. You can move. You can, you can highlight a section of the map, and it will actually give you a screenshot of that section of the map at full size. Oh, cool, cool. Um, Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't get again. I didn't get that from the video. Um, they've got achievements, which I actually opened up my uh, previous character, previous game, and start. I said ran from one side of the map to the other, killed a lot of things, and literally the second I loaded up my map because I loaded a character that already had shit loads of armor and shit loads of weapons and killed shit loads of bosses. My fucking achievements just flew off the top of my roof. <laughs> I just like <laughs> fucking eight hundred achievements in there. Um, Steam integration, which means you can now. Uh, upload. Actually, I think this might be a, a mod it's so thing. Join, it's so you can join a server, I think. Oh, right, okay. But there's other stuff. I don't know if they're doing Steam Workshop. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought. Um, and they've got Streamline Multiplayer, which is probably the same thing. Uh, and yeah. Cloud Integration, so you can now save your characters to the cloud. There's actually a button in the game that allows you to... All the Instead of just having a list of character names, it's now got like a, a new UI, so you can save, save to cloud and delete play play as etc things like that i'm really looking forward to playing terraria again yes good yeah you having a bit of enthusiasm is quite cool these days you mizog fallout shelter is doing extremely well now this <laughs> is that 2d ipad uh, apple itunes game that they're saying it's not to make money it's not just a cash cow um, they're actually yes it is yeah it probably is I haven't played it yet and when it comes out on Android I might have a go but before then not asked I haven't got an iPhone not going to get one just to play cat at this it doesn't look like the thing it about the Fallout games is the games actually start when you get out of the fucking vault I don't really want to play a game that's about managing a vault isn't that what it's about I probably quite yeah. enjoy it I think I think I'd be into it yeah. I like managing games though I'm, I'm a bit weird like that I've never been into them. Star Citizen, which is the massively kind of multiplayer, massive universe indie game that's kind of never going to come out, that got kickstarted. Um, it got more than kickstarted. It, it, it's on many millions of pounds now. Yeah, still getting funding. Yeah, people funding it every five bloody <laughs> seconds. Um, Citizen, but they're still offering a four hundred dollar ship. Now this is a ship that can I think it's something can hold something like thirty two people, and it can uh, you can either have it as a big massive cargo ship or you can have it as you know thirty two seated area and it's supposed to be a luxury ship, but the fact that they're charging four hundred dollars for a ship in game for some DLC essentially or for some buy your way to success again is it I don't know what what. It, what are your this is this is Star this? Citizen's model. I mean, if you look at the way Star Citizen has been funded and and the way that they're doing things, this is appealing directly to this audience who basically want to pretend to be real people in space. Right. And so they want to pretend to have the best ships in space. It's all about status. It's about style. It's. N I don't think it's ever really going to be much of a game. In the same way, that Eve Online isn't really much of a game. It's all about Second Life type thing. Yeah. So, we'll have to see, but it is, it's certainly appealing to the audience that it's, it's got with this sort of 
expensive ship thing, and it will sell. Oh, no, I, no know that. I know that. I mean, people have funded it, funded ridiculous amounts individually, so... As the game itself Kickstarter. looks to be very ambitious, but also it doesn't seem to be delivering the sort of... It doesn't seem to be delivering on the scale that it's saying that it was going to. Like, you don't actually have an open universe. You've got, like, a load of... Load of maps basically so when you come and land on a planet you don't fly down to a planet and then pick somewhere to land you come down onto the planet and then it puts you in a certain place and you get automatically docked into the same station on that same planet hmm. and that's just a map made in the cry engine because that's what the game's written in Skeptical. so it's exactly it's it's a little bit weird but it's it's a big hype machine and it's doing really well in terms of being a big hype machine. Do you, what, when, what, is, is, is there any dates due, like due dates now? There's lots of different parts of the game, so there's like um, a first person shooter module where you can board people's ships and take them hostage and stuff like that. Um, and they're all separately, they've all been kind of separate games that have been packaged into this Star Citizen universe sort of experience. Um, and there's a roadmap on their website. I don't know what's, I think the, um, the dogfighting is the current one that they're working on. Uh, Fair enough. I mean, I don't know much about it. I know it was a, a massive Kickstarter success, but that's about it, pretty much. Um, well, anyway, <coughs> I, I just do, I wanted to see if anyone had any opinions about this phone adult. I'm not sure. I, I, it's just more DLC buy your way to completeness, isn't it, for me? It's a strange thing. Is that it's ridiculous? Ridiculous prices for. I mean, you're paying four hundred quid, and is there a subscription model as well? Or uh, yes, there is. So there's a, you, you've, you've yeah. kickstarted it. There's a subscription model, and then there's additional content to purchase. So it's an MMO without the. Sorry, yeah, I suppose it's an MMO without any kind of. I suppose if it's got, I don't know, boarding modules and pirate. You know, you can be a pirate if you want to. That'd be quite cool. Mm. I don't know. It's a hell of a lot of money for the privilege, though, isn't it? And, well, you don't I mean, have to buy this. This is like the top end tier ship that you could get. You could get. And it's a huge ship, apparently, and you can have an entire colony of people on it, type thing. You know. But in these sort yeah. of games, someone will always have to have it. I mean, they're relying on the fact that someone will have be stupid enough to buy it, and that will cause other people to buy it and then buy better ships. And the people will always be chasing the status quo. As you, you and I have seen with casual games, Chris. It's just the way that it goes. Someone will always be stupid enough to start the avalanche going. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Right, so anyway, let's move on. Um, I got a, a note in here about Australia again doing crazy things with game censorship. We've got a... Uh, uh, what was this, the thing? 220 games have been banned in the last four months in Australia. Now, most of these are indie and <coughs> um, mobile releases. Either they've been unclassified or not been classified at all. And there's some kind of kind of um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the developers have to rate themselves essentially, and and note which parts of the game <coughs> are dubious, I suppose. Um, but there's there's been removal of scenes in games for Australia. There's been removal of content. Uh, we're talking about complete bans of games like you know, obviously there's the uh, I'm sure I'm sure Manhunt's probably banned in. Every sure, hatred. The, maybe hatred, I'm not sure. Um, <coughs> Mortal Kombat 10 has been banned in, in Australia. Um, what I find strange about Australia is that, that on the face of it, they seem like quite an easygoing bunch of people who are up for a laugh, uh, that not don't take themselves too seriously. And yet, there seems to be this growing kind of fundamentalist government, like yeah. undercurrent to them, yeah, where they're like they're be being really hyper conservative about everything. Yeah. It's really weird. Hotline Miami 2 has been banned as well. And it's just like, I, I, I see plenty of posts on the internet about, you know, from Australians going, where can I get hold of this game? Can I, you know, mm. they're, they're, they're pirating games because the government are banning it. Now, I don't know what that means to them if they get found out about doing this, but it's still, it seems, it seems a, a, to me a breach of kind of civil rights in some yeah, respects. It's, it's censorship. But it's, Total censorship. But it's games. I mean, surely we we obviously we know there is controversy surrounding violent computer games. There always has been, and there always probably will be. But I don't know to ban a game outright. It just feels it just feels dirty to me. 
And they could they could make it like a like a, an X rated strictly for adults only game. But yeah, to ban a game outright, it's like it's that thing of saying you're not capable of processing this game. We are going to keep you safe from it. It's a terrible. No, but it's all attitude. around kind of like the legalities within a different country. And if if Australia determined that certain uh, like political messages or certain behaviours are illegal, and then they've approached the game manufacturer and said, "Look, in order for you to sell that in our country, you need to remove X, Y, and Z." And the developers went, "No, I'm not going to remove that. Sorry." And they're going to say, "Right, okay, no deal, no dice." You're only hearing what the end product is. Hmm. So they haven't just went out and said, we're going to ban you, 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 and you. No, of course. There's probably been dialogue uh, in the background there. And just, it's probably the developers or the publishing houses that have refused to move on the matter because it's not worth the additional investment for them. Yeah, it'll all be, yeah I suppose it'll but, all be money back to thinking about it, yeah. But then if you think about that logistically, yeah, that's kind of, I'm kind of on their side on that argument, though, because if every country had their own stipulations just about what content was viable... Then the game yeah. would be would just be a ridiculous mess of all these different uh, cut, uh, bits that have been cut out and spliced back in, and where and, and everybody's experience of the game would be totally different. It's like saying if you make a film, um, and then every single country's got a different version of that film because everyone's got sensibilities that it might offend. It's it's a kind of unrealistic proposition, but really. What happens though, isn't it? That's exactly what happens: is that you get censorship on. Uh, Per country basis. Yeah, that's but the way it's always been. If you look at, for example, uh, Wolfenstein: The New Order, that was heavily edited for release uh, in the German market. And they always have trouble with games like that. Yeah, yeah, but not to triple A studio, which you know obviously had the time and resource in order to do that. If you're talking about an indie developer, that's already put a lot of hours into developing a the game. They haven't necessarily got the time or the resources to be able to go back through that and change certain elements in order to suit someone's political regime and i'm imagining games like mortal kombat 10 are just so full of violence that it's not yeah, that they can't wouldn't have a game would they a viable game. But, yeah, yeah exactly it would break the game wouldn't it i think i think my my problem is 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 with the actual censorship it's like it's like anything it's i mean we we brits are uh, known to be prudes across the world i suppose aren't they i suppose and but yet we have quite a real relaxed kind of idea on these things we're we we don't really ban that much. What is banned is is, I mean, highly offensive stuff. Like, I don't know. There are probably good reasons for this, but there pro- there are also probably reasons that, and maybe not worth us going into on this kind of no, show. No, well, I mean, I've, I, the things that I've read is things like Saints Row Four. They've taken the anal probe out of the game. Because I know right, it, it it's implemented in a funny way in that game. It's it's a weapon, and you know it's implemented. Fair enough. It's it's a bit bad taste, but there's a lot of bad taste in a lot of games, you know. And it's just it's just daft. But I don't know. it must be a relatively new thing as well, because you know I, when I think of Australia, I think of things like you know Mad Max and things like that. You know, these well, certainly not th- like light is, for the faint of heart. <laughs> this is a country that produced so. Kevin Bloody Wilson, the singer. For God's sake, have you listened to any of his content on YouTube? Or I don't know if you can get him on YouTube. Is that it's absolutely disgusting, but he's he's it's horrific. Some of the stuff he comes out with, but yeah, the the banning this kind of stuff. I, I just, this, this is a dichotomy that I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it either. Um, I think I th- there seems th- to be like a disconnect between between the Australian people and the Australian government. I think that might be what it is. There's, I think, there's probably a lot of controversy going on as well in general, and it's just kind of the reacting rather than thinking about it too much. If you know what I mean, they're just reacting to. Um, calls from certain members of the public or certain groups rather um anyway let's move this on this is basically it yeah it's and we could go on about this it's just speculation i suppose isn't it we're not really getting anywhere with this um mario in the unreal engine bit of light-heartedness for you here this is kind of mario with modern updated graphics some of it's really weird to watch some of it's really cool but it's like it's it's like him in really highly rendered environments. I thought it was quite mm. a bit of fun to, to have a look at. This looks a bit random. Yeah, it is a bit. It's it's a fan did, made thing. I did watch it, and it just reminded me how much I fucking hate Mario's voice. <laughs> but for <laughs> such a, for such a, for such for such an i for such an iconic gaming mascot, why does he have to have a voice that makes him want to kill people? 
it's awful. I don't know. Don't know but that video was that video was quite good. They didn't do the voice. They, they did. It's else. a very nice environment as well. There's a few. Yeah. There's actually a number. It, it of, changes. Skip, skip through the video. There's quite a lot. Does it um, feel Nintendo-ish though? Does it when you're watching it? You just, just it feels like someone's like done some some Nintendo hentai and put it on your there's, screen. There's some <laughs> severe um, scaling problems as well with the size of Mario and the environments he's in. In some of the some of the environments, anyway, he's like as big as the roof in a walking running around in a school, and he's as nearly as big as the ceiling. It's daft. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront will not include <coughs> space maps, so we won't have any space battles like there was in Battlefront oh. Two. I wanted to ask about that. So is that, is that something that has been in the series for a long time? Was it just in Battlefront 2? It or? wasn't in Battlefront 1, but I think it was in Battlefront 2, and it was actually a lot of fun. You could basically fly between Star Destroyers, um, dock the Star Destroyers, and then destroy like engines and bits inside it. So that was the, the main idea of it. But there was also, within the, uh, like, within the area of space, you could capture certain points if you were flying around them for long enough. Um, yeah. And oh, there was enough p people on your team flying around them. So it's, it's again, it's a similar kind of uh, thing. But this is a brand new, it's a shame, brand new kind of engine for the game. Even though the previous one was similar, it's still new. This, um, but they've so, got they've got flying vehicles in the game, so it can't be that much of a stretch to make. It's not that space I think segments. Th th they've got a problem with. Um, I can't remember what they said in the article exactly, but they, 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 there was a specific reason for it anyway. I, I don't know. Is it the I, case of they might release some possibly downloadable content that's got space battles in it later, possibly? That's more likely, isn't it? I think yeah, it is it probably more likely. Um, mm. There's no campaign mode in the main game, which, uh, I mean, Battlefront, Battlefield rather, has always suffered, suffered for the campaign, but... I would like to see a campaign mode in Star Star Wars Battlefront because I want this. I I want to experience Star Wars stories, you know. Hmm. No, Battlefield no, okay. 3's campaign was was kind. It could have been good if it was actually if they'd spent a bit more time with it. I think didn't Battlefield 4 have a really good campaign, or at least the trailer was fantastic for the campaign. The trailer was really good, yeah. I don't know. I think obviously I played, that didn't transpire. I played a little bit of Battlefield 3's campaign, but. Uh, at the time, I was having computer Battle problems. Battlefield 3's had some, some serious bugs with it. Like, there's, there, there was missions where you become uncompletable very easily. Had a lot uh, of soft locks in it. Fair enough. I said I didn't, yeah. I didn't play much of it because my PC was crashing and it was worse in the single player than it was on the multiplayer, so... Um, there's no Death Star map as well. Fans have been calling out, asking them if there's a Death, Death Star map. However, they have said that I think there's 12 maps or something like that. I, thought if, I haven't reread the article, but I think there's 12 maps they're releasing to start off with. Then, as we know, there will be DLC content. I think this, and I can't imagine me enjoying it. I'm going to get it, but I don't imagine me enjoying this game enough to get the DLC, you know? Personally. Yeah, that's possibly going to be the problem, isn't it? Uh, but, but it will include female stormtroopers. Apparently, hey. yeah. Now, apparently, the the reason oh, that we haven't seen a female stormtrooper before in anything to do with not in the canon. That's because the or, clones are all the same guy. They're all the same guy. They're not. But, they're not. Well, well, the well they're not anymore, but, but they used to be. But the 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 point the point that they said is that we haven't included just because we haven't shown them in any of the things doesn't mean there aren't female stormtroopers. So basically, this is them reacting in a good way to all of the all of the where's the female characters in games stuff, you know. Which, uh, you know, I'm I'm glad it doesn't make any difference to me if it's got a, fe a female voice or male voice. You know, it's yeah, is what it is. They all die the same, don't they? They all, they die, all die the same. The they same. all shoot the same. I hope, I, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping you, <laughs> there's, there's got to be a, there's got to be an element of not being able to aim when you're playing as a stormtrooper in those games. There has <laughs> yeah, to be because <laughs> this cross set goes like this around the screen, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. behind you and stuff. <laughs> um, Minecraft has now sold 20 million PC copies and it has PC. sorry? P just PC then? This is PC sales specifically, I mean I don't know about consoles but Minecraft has now sold that many and it now sells for 20 euros a pop doesn't it I think is that a lot more than it used to be or? Uh, it used to be 5 euros when I got it in alpha oh god, so you, you've still got a full copy of it though haven't you? I've still got a full copy that I bought uh, many years ago five six years ago maybe all right still not played it in any capacity i played it on my mobile for a bit i've got a free I've version of it on my mobile it doesn't appeal to me that much terraria all the way for me 
Yeah. Right. I can tell you both. All or you both. All three of you are aboard now. So shall we? Uh, shall we close the show down? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Too hot. That's uh, what it is. It is. I'm really warm, as I'm, you can see. I am glistening. I'm, <laughs> I've literally got three layers of sweat on top of me. I can't <laughs> tell whether it's actually my monitor or a mirage in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done well not mentioning the heat until now. Apart from, I think Lou went, oh my god, it's hot! At the very beginning the of the bloody, show. The bloody weather! We can't, no, I said it in ever... chat. Ah. It's just a case of a wife um, feeder. If anybody does watch us who's not from the UK, one thing you should know about British people is we'll always complain about the weather. If it's hot, it's too hot. If it's raining, we hate that. If it's a bit chilly, we hate that. If it's snowing, we hate that. Whatever the weather does, we hate it. We just hate it. <laughs> yeah. The weather is awful in England. because we're, It's because it's so changeable, that's why. And our, our fair skin doesn't allow us to... I've been enjoying it. Was, it's, it's been it nice and sunny, sunny down 20, here in Cornwall. Yeah, if it was sunny and 21 degrees with a slight breeze every day, okay, that'd be fantastic. Well. That's all I'm asking for. It goes straight from 10 degrees to 30 degrees without stopping at 20. And then, and then when it's 30 degrees, it rains like fuck occasionally. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, when then it's you 10... get flash floods. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's back in the 30s again. Yeah. It's, we have it's, to always remind ourselves. We have to always remind ourselves that without that Gulf Stream, we would kind of be like Siberia. So, you know. We are We're okay. We're okay. Way. Yeah, it's all right though. It's not actually that bad. It's quite nice. It's interesting. Anyway. I, I was looking at a map today, just before we finish. I was looking at a map today, and I noticed the latitude that Japan's on. They have comparable weather to us in Japan, yet we're well higher up. We're way farther north than um, Japan. We're on the yeah. same latitude as Norway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> J- Japan. That was, the, um... that was very theatrical. <laughs> oh, he's nearly popped off there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always um, is Japan's weather comparable with us? Because I always, from what I've seen of, of the media, they, it, it's it's painted as being quite a warm and sunny kind of place that has it's great cold all the time. Win- co- everything I've seen, cold winters. Anyway, anyway, let's that talk about this after, after the show. This isn't about weather. This show. Let's move on. I was going to say I was in Latvia quite recently, which is on the same. The same latitude is pretty much the north of England, and it was like ridiculously hot there, yeah, stupidly yeah. hot. <clears throat> Whereas the Netherlands is usually a little bit colder than here. It's similar, but usually got a bit of more of a chill on it. And we're on the same latitude as that as well, I believe. Uh, the south of England is, yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much for everyone who watched today. Thanks for those who participated, and uh, thanks to Sam, Steve, and Lou. Catch you later. See you next Wednesday, people. See you later. Bye. Bye.